Hello and welcome. In our previous devotion, we explored the broad theme of healing as presented in the Bible, focusing on how God's promises encompass every aspect of our lives, spiritual, emotional, and physical. We reflected on how healing is central to God's nature as he desires to restore us to wholeness in every way. Today, we will delve deeper into the specific aspect of, aspect of physical healing, a powerful theme in the scripture that reveals God's compassion and his desire to heal and restore our bodies. Physical healing is not just a miraculous event, but a reflection of God's ongoing care for his creation. Throughout the Bible, we encounter stories of individuals who are healed by God's power, stories that serve as vivid reminders of his love and concern for our physical well-being. These accounts are not merely historical events. They are timeless testimonies of God's desire to bring restoration and wholeness to our lives today. God's commitment to physical healing. The Bible is overflowing with promises and instances of physical healing, a testament to God's unwavering commitment to our well-being. This divine assurance begins with God's own words in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17, where he declares, But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds. This verse is a profound reminder that God is not only concerned with our spiritual and emotional well-being, but also deeply invested in our physical health. God's desire to heal us is deeply rooted in his character as revealed in one of his many names, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals you, as we read in Exodus chapter 15 verse 16. This name is not merely a title, it encapsulates the very essence of who God is, a healer who is fully capable of restoring every part of our being. Throughout the Bible, we see this healing nature of God repeatedly demonstrated. From the Old Testament, where God heals the illness and injuries of his people, to the New Testament, where Jesus heals the sick, the blind, and the lame, God's commitment to our physical well-being is clear. When God identifies himself as Jehovah Rapha, he is declaring his ongoing commitment to bring about healing and restoration in our lives. This promise extends beyond the confines of ancient Israel and reaches into our present-day struggles with sickness and disease. God's healing is not limited by time, place, or circumstance. Whether we face chronic illness, sudden injury, or lingering pain, we can hold fast the truth that God is our healer. Moreover, this divine healing is holistic. It is not confined to one aspect of our being, but encompasses the whole person. God's healing touch is available to our bodies, minds, and spirits. He is concerned with the restoration of our physical bodies, the healing of our emotional wounds, and the renewal of our spirits. When we turn to God in our times of physical distress, we are not just seeking relief from our symptoms. We are seeking the healing presence of the one who knows us completely and loves us unconditionally. In Exodus chapter 15 verse 26, God's identity as Jehovah Rapha is revealed in a powerful context. The Israelites, having just crossed the Red Sea and escaped the bondage of Egypt, found themselves in the wilderness without drinkable water. God intervened by turning the bitter waters of Mara sweet, providing for their physical needs and teaching them a valuable lesson, that he is the source of all healing. He is the source of all healing. In this moment, God established that his power to heal extends to every situation, whether it be the healing of waters, the curing of diseases, or the restoration of broken bodies. This understanding of God as our healer should profoundly shape our faith and our approach to physical ailments. 
It encourages us to bring our physical needs before God with confidence, trusting in his ability to heal. It also reminds us that God's healing is not just about the absence of disease, but the presence of his wholeness in our lives. He desires to restore us fully, making us whole in every sense of the word. As we navigate the challenges of physical health, let us remember that we serve a God who is intimately involved in our lives. He is not distant or indifferent to our suffering. Rather, he is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals, and he invites us to experience his healing power in every area of our lives. In Psalms, we find a deep and comforting affirmation of God's healing power in Psalms chapter 147, verse 3, which says, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. This verse is often understood as a promise of emotional and spiritual restoration, reminding us that God is close to those who are suffering and wounded in spirit. However, the truth of this verse extends even further revealing the completeness of God's healing touch, a healing that encompasses not just our inner being, but also our physical bodies. God's healing is not confined to intangible aspects of our lives. It is holistic, covering every dimension of our existence. Just as he is attentive to our emotional wounds and spiritual needs, God is equally concerned with our physical ailments. Whether we are grappling with the pain of a broken heart, the burden of chronic illness, or the limitations of a physical injury, God is actively involved in our healing process. His healing is not just about providing temporary relief or superficial comfort. It is about bringing us full health and wholeness. This verse from the Psalms underscores the depths of God's compassion and the breadth of his healing power. The imagery of God binding up wounds is particularly poignant, evoking the care and tenderness of a physician who skillfully tends to the injuries of a patient. God does not merely acknowledge our suffering. He takes action to heal and restore us, wrapping us in his love and care. The idea that God heals both the broken hearted and the wounded highlights the interconnection between our emotional, spiritual, and physical health. These aspects of our being are not isolated from one another. Rather, they are intricately linked. Emotional distress can manifest in physical symptoms, and physical illness can weigh heavily on our spirits. God understands this interconnectedness, and his healing touch addresses the totality of who we are. In times of sickness, injury or chronic conditions, it is comforting to know that God's healing is comprehensive. He does not overlook any part of our suffering. When we cry out to him in our pain, he hears us and is moved by our affliction. He is not a distant observer, but an active participant in our journey toward healing. God works in ways that are often beyond our understanding bringing about healing in his perfect timing and according to his divine wisdom. The healing process may be gradual or instantaneous, visible or unseen, but it is always guided by God's loving hand. As we trust in him, we can rest assured that he is working to bring us to full health, not only in body but also in mind and spirit. This holistic healing is a reflection of God's desire for us to live in the fullness of life that he has intended for us, a life that is marked by peace, health, and wholeness. Ultimately, Psalms 147 verse 3 serves as a powerful reminder of God's all-encompassing care. Whether we face emotional turmoil, spiritual struggle, or physical ailments, we can turn to God with confidence, knowing that he is our healer. His healing touch reaches into the deepest parts of our being, bringing restoration, peace, and strength. As we place our trust in him, we can experience the fullness of his healing power in every area of our lives.
the healing ministry of Jesus. Jesus Christ's earthly ministry was profoundly marked by acts of physical healing, which were not only vivid demonstrations of his divine power, but also unmistakable expressions of his deep compassion for humanity. Throughout the Gospels, we witnessed Jesus healing the sick, giving sight to the blind, making the lame walk, and even raising the dead. These miracles are more than just remarkable events in history. They are powerful testimonies to God's heart for physical restoration and his desire to alleviate human suffering. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, we find a verse that beautifully encapsulates the essence of Jesus' ministry. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. This verse paints a comprehensive picture of Jesus' mission, which was twofold, to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God and to tangibly demonstrate its power through acts of healing. Jesus' work of healing was not a separate mission from his teaching. It was an integral part of the gospel message itself. His healings were living illustrations of the kingdom's revival a kingdom where sickness, pain, and death will ultimately be defeated. Jesus' healing ministry also fulfilled the ancient prophecies of the Old Testament, affirming his identity as the promised Messiah. The prophets had foretold that the coming Savior would not only bring spiritual renewal, but also physical restoration. For instance, Isaiah chapter 35 Verses 5 and 6 prophesy, Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer, and the mute tongue shout for joy. These prophetic words found their fulfillment in the miracles of Jesus, who brought these very transformations to the lives of those he touched. One of the most profound connections between physical healing and the redemptive work of Christ is found in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, a passage that resonates deeply with the Christian understanding of the cross. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. This prophecy which speaks of the suffering servant, Jesus Christ, reveals that the physical and spiritual healing of humanity was accomplished through his suffering. The wounds that Christ bore were the means by which God provided a pathway to wholeness for all who believe. The phrase, by his wounds we are healed, underscores the profound truth that Christ's physical suffering on the cross was not in vain. It was through his sacrificial death that the power of sin and death was broken, and through his resurrection, the hope of eternal life and complete restoration was made available. This healing is both immediate and eschatological, immediate in the sense that believers can experience God's healing power in the here and now, and eschatological in the sense that the ultimate fulfillment of this healing will be realized in the resurrection and life to come. Jesus' healing were acts of compassion, revealing God's deep concern for the physical well-being of humanity. But they were also signs pointing to the greater reality of the kingdom of God, where all creation will be made new and every form of suffering will be eradicated. In this way, each healing miracle performed by Jesus is a first foretaste of the future restoration that awaits all creation. For believers today, these accounts of Jesus' healing ministry are not just historical records. They are an invitation to trust in God's ongoing power to heal. Whether we are facing physical illness, emotional distress, or spiritual brokenness, we can turn to Christ with the confidence that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Just as he healed those who came to him in faith during his earthly ministry, he continues to heal and restore those who seek him now. In reflecting on Jesus' healing ministry, 
we are reminded that the salvation he offers is holistic. It encompasses our entire being, addressing, addressing not only our spiritual needs, but also our physical and emotional ones. The cross is the ultimate symbol of this truth, of this truth, where the spiritual and physical meet in the person of Jesus Christ, who bore our sins and infirmities to bring us life in all its fullness. Through his wounds, we are indeed healed. And through his resurrection, we are given the hope of complete restoration in the kingdom of God. Faith as a catalyst for healing. Faith is a critical component in the process of physical healing, serving as a bridge that connects us to God's miraculous power. Throughout the Bible, faith is consistently portrayed as a catalyst that activates God's healing touch. It is through faith that individuals in scripture experience profound physical restoration, illustrating that healing is not merely a physical process, but a deeply spiritual one as well. In the New Testament, James chapter 5 verses 14 and 15 provide clear instructions for believers who are seeking physical healing. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. This passage emphasizes the significance of communal prayer and faith in the healing process. It reveals that God often chooses to work through the collective faith of his people, highlighting the importance of unity and support within the body of Christ when seeking healing. The act of calling the elders to pray and anoint the sick with oil is not a mere ritual. It is an expression of faith in God's healing power. The anointing with the oil a practice rooted in both Jewish and Christian traditions symbolizes the presence of the Holy Spirit and the believer's dependence on God's divine intervention. It is a tangible act that reflects an inward trust in God's promises. When this anointing is combined with prayer offered in faith, it creates an environment where God's healing power can be fully realized. The promise in James is clear. The prayer of faith will make the sick person well, underscoring the fact that faith is an essential element in the process of healing. A compelling example of faith leading to physical healing is found in the story of the woman with the issue of blood, as recorded in Mark chapter 5 from verse 25 to 34. This woman had endured 12 long years of suffering from a condition that left her physically weakened and socially isolated. Despite seeking help from numerous physicians, her condition only grew worse. However, when she heard about Jesus, her heart was filled with hope. She believed with unwavering faith that if she could only touch the hem of his garment, she would be healed. Her faith was not a passive belief, but an active trust in Jesus' power to heal. She made her way through the crowd, reached out, and touched his cloak. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. Jesus, recognizing that power had gone out from him, turned to the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? The woman, trembling with fear, came forward and confessed what she had done. Jesus' response to her is profound. Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. That is Mark chapter 5 verse 34. This story vividly illustrates that faith is not just a mental ascent or a hopeful wish. It is an active, trusting engagement with God's power. The woman's faith was the key that unlocked the healing power of Jesus. Despite the overwhelming odds against her, her faith was strong enough to compel her to action. Her healing was immediate and complete, demonstrating that when faith meets God's power, miraculous things happen. The story also highlights the personal nature of Jesus' healing ministry. He not only healed the woman physically, 
but also addressed her personally and lovingly, calling her daughter and affirming her faith. This encounter shows that Jesus' healing is not about physical restoration only. It is about relationship and recognition of our value in God's eyes. Her faith led to her physical healing, but it also brought her peace and renewed sense of identity with and worth. Faith, therefore, is a critical element in experiencing God's healing. It requires more than just a belief in God's ability to heal. It requires a personal trusting relationship with him and a willingness to act on that trust. Whether through communal prayer, as instructed in James, or through personal acts of faith, as demonstrated by the woman with the issue of blood, faith opens the door for God's healing power to flow into our lives. It is through faith that we experience not only the healing of our bodies, but also the peace and wholeness that comes from being in the presence of our loving Savior. Let's look at the power of, the power of prayer in healing. Prayer is a fundamental element in seeking physical healing, serving as a direct line of communication between us and God. It is through prayer that we express our deepest needs, desires, and hopes for healing, acknowledging our dependence on God's power and grace. The act of prayer is more than just asking for physical restoration. It is an expression of faith, trust, and confidence in God's ability to heal us according to his will. The Psalms, a book rich in expressions of human emotion and divine intervention, repeatedly remind us of God's power to heal and his willingness to do so. Psalms 103, verses 2 and 3, exhort us, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases. This verse is a powerful reminder to approach God with a heart full of gratitude and faith. It encourages us not to forget the many benefits that come from our, re our relationship with God, including his power to heal our physical ailments. By recalling God's past acts of healing and forgiveness, we strengthen our faith and renew our trust in his ability to work in our lives. Prayer is not merely a ritualistic request for healing. It is an intimate conversation with God where we acknowledge his sovereignty and our dependence on him. When we pray for physical healing, we are doing more than just presenting our needs. We are also exp expressing our belief that God is good, loving, and fully capable of restoring our health. This act of prayer is a declaration of faith, a, rec a recognition that we trust God with our body, our circumstances, and our futures. It is in this space of prayer that we align our hearts with God's will, opening ourselves up to the healing power that only He can provide. However, as we pray for physical healing, it is essential to remember that God's timing and methods may differ from our own expectations. While we may desire immediate healing, God's plan may involve a process that requires patience, perseverance, and trust. Jeremiah 30, chapter 33, verse 6 offers a profound promise. I will bring health and healing, and I will heal them and reveal to them abundance of prosperity and security. This verse assures us that God is committed to our health and well-being, but it also invites us to trust in his perfect timing and method. God's ways are higher than ours, and his perspective is eternal. He sees the full picture of our lives including the purposes and plans that we may not yet understand. Sometimes, God's healing comes in ways that we do not anticipate, through medical treatment, through the support of our community, or through a gradual process that deepens our faith and reliance on Him. Other times, healing may come in the form of spiritual or emotional restoration, even when physical healing is delayed or does not occur as we hoped. In these moments, prayer becomes a vital tool for cultivating trust in God's wisdom and goodness. When we pray, 
we are reminded that God is with us in our suffering, working all things together for our ultimate good, as we read in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Prayer helps us to surrender our desires and expectations to God, allowing him to work in our lives according to his perfect will. It is through this act of surrender that we find peace, knowing that God's plan is always for our best, even when it involves waiting or walking through difficult seasons. Moreover, prayer for physical healing is not only about seeking God's intervention for ourselves, but also about interceding for others. As members of the body of Christ, we are called to pray for one another, lifting up those who are sick and in need of healing. James chapter 5 verse 16 reminds us, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. In praying for others, we participate in God's work of healing and demonstrate our life love and care for those around us. Prayer is an essential component of the healing process, grounding us in faith and trust in God's ability to heal. As we pray, we are reminded of God's promises, his goodness, and his ultimate control over our lives. While we may not always understand God's timing or methods, we can be assured that he is faithful to his word and that his plans for us are always for our good. In prayer, we find the strength to endure, the faith to believe, and the peace to rest in God's loving care. The Bible offers us numerous examples and promises of physical healing, reminding us that God is deeply and concerned with our own well-being. Whether we are seeking healing for ourselves or interceding on behalf of others, we can approach God with healing confidence, knowing that he is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. Let us continue to pray in faith, trusting in his timing and hold fast to the promises of scripture, knowing that God is able and willing to restore us to full health. Now, let us pray as we wind up. Our Heavenly Father, May your name be glorified. Thank you for giving us this opportunity so that we may encourage each other as we learn more about your love for us, a love that goes deeper and you even want us to have good health physically. There may be those who are listening and viewing now and have physical problems. Whatever the ailments may be, Lord, Heal them, touch them with your tender mercies. May your peace be upon them. Give them restoration according to your will. As you heal their physical bodies, touch their minds, their souls, and give them spiritual restoration too. Thank you for hearing us. Give them hope. Give them peace. Give them physical restoration that glorifies your name as we live all trusting in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. May God bless you. And let's meet again next time for another devotional moment.